In today's community focus, we're talking about your kids. Last week, a group of pediatri pediatricians and psychiatrists in Rhode Island declared a state of emergency for child and adolescent mental health. Now, this is something we've been tracking throughout the pandemic. COVID and its restrictions left health professionals seeing a significant increase in mental health challenges among children. Joining us live today via Zoom, Dr. Elizabeth Ann Lowenhaupt from Lifespan. She is a pediatrician and child psychiatrist at Bradley and Hasbro Hospitals and the Brown Medical School. Thanks so much, doctor, for being here with us. Thank you for having me. So, doctor, let's start with this. We know about this mental health alert that was sent out last week. What was really the catalyst to declare this a state of emergency? Well, our um, national organizations declared this emergency back in the fall, the American Academy of Pediatrics, the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, and the Children's Hospital Association. And we have been seeing so much um, of the same challenges, so much of the same challenge here in Rhode Island that we felt it was important, given some of the unique characteristics of our state, to declare our own state of emergency here. Uh, you know, obviously, as you just mentioned, this is not unique to Rhode Island. It's a national issue going, uh, going on right now, potentially a global issue. What is the national conversation about providing care? Well, uh, what we're seeing are two different issues. We're seeing children and adolescents presenting with more and more psychiatric symptoms and psychiatric diagnoses at the same time that we're seeing a reduction in available treatment and services for them. Um, so prior to the pandemic, for, for several years now, um, the number of uh, children and especially adolescents presenting with crises such as self-injurious behaviors, suicidal ideation and attempts, um, as well as just general symptoms, depression, anxiety, substance use, eating disorders across the spectrum, um, we've been seeing more and more of these types of problems um, and the pandemic seems to have really escalated those as well as impacted our ability to provide um, appropriate services. Um, services have been limited for some time and now with the increase in need as well as reductions in staffing um, and families are just seeing long wait times. It's hard to find a therapist for your child. It's hard to find specialized treatment. Some programs are booking out several months, which doesn't work if your family is in immediate need of support. Um, and so I think the conversation is really around how do we build up more capacity to provide treatment to, to children and families who need it? How do we think creatively about the best ways to get access to care for everybody? Yeah, I want to talk a little bit, if we can, about sort of the, the cause of these symptoms that you're seeing in kids. You, you mentioned the impacts of COVID and the pandemic. So I guess I sort of have a two-part question. What COVID protocols, perhaps, do you see as maybe being the most damaging to kids? And what non-COVID factors might be at play as well? That's a great question. And we're really looking at a lot of different options. The research hasn't shown exactly what is causing the problem, uh, but certainly factors related to COVID involve children and adolescents losing family members, losing caregivers, losing people who are close to them. Um, we've certainly been concerned uh, about the disruption for kids in schools. So distance learning, remote learning, coming to school, going home on quarantine, all of this is very disruptive to routines for children, for teens. Um, when they're returning to school, sort of expecting to get them back into the swing of things quickly, expecting them to catch up on work, that they've missed um, just a lot of uh, change to the routine and to uh, what's been a previously pretty dependable experience for children in schools. Um, and then finally, um, you know, I think because of the pandemic, so many uh, outpatient providers have switched to using telehealth. Maybe um, people who used to go into homes with children to provide specialized treatment there had to try doing that remotely. Um, some of the residential programs that we've seen that I work with um, have had to reduce the number of patients they can, they can take or home-based treatment providers have had to reduce the number of families they can help because we see providers going into other lines of work where um, perhaps there's a little bit less risk associated with COVID or really otherwise. Uh, and so it's been a, a number of different things. Um, in terms of what was going on before the pandemic, a lot of people like to talk about social media. Um, we haven't really 
figured out the impact of, of social media and the changes that has made for adolescents. Uh, but certainly during the pandemic, when so many of the social interactions were remote and not in person, that has shifted how kids interact with other people. And so we're, I, I think um, we still need to figure out exactly what's happening, but there certainly are a number of factors contributing. And Doctor, we have just about 30 seconds, but I'm curious, uh, you know, if you can pinpoint one thing that we can do, members of society, parents, teachers, um, to help right now, um, especially going back to something you said before, that it could be months for some families that are trying to reach out and, and find access to therapy. Um, what's one thing we could be doing right now? Thank you for asking, and I'm going to try to talk really fast and give you three, because I came up with three ideas for, for, for the adults uh, in our state. First, please pay attention to the kids in your life, your children, your children's friends, your friends' children, your students, your patients. Make sure they know they can come to you or another trusted adult if they need help. Um, second, don't worry alone. Please reach out to your child's pediatrician, to somebody at the school, to a therapist or a psychiatrist if you have one. Um, if you really have no resources and you're concerned, call uh, Bradley's Kids Link, 855-543. 5465. And then finally, please uh, stay involved in our current uh, government. There are a number of bills right now that will help the situation. We have elections coming up and it's an opportunity for us as a state to show our elected officials how important children's behavioral health is and how much we care about children and their future. Dr. Elizabeth Lowenhaupt, thanks you so much for your time today. Thank you.